Okay, let's see how you go with this. So um, let me go through the basics of a Venn diagram as well so that everyone's on the same page. And this is more to do with setting out. So everyone make sure you pay attention so that you've got it. Number one, Venn diagrams are always drawn in a box. So without a box, it's not a proper Venn diagram. Okay, and the reason why we have a box is as follows. Each of these circles here represents the event or the collection. This is a sample space, in this case of dog owners or cat owners. And we need to have a space for, um, for neither. So in other words, for all those poor people with no pets or only guinea pigs or birds or horses or ponies or heifalumps, we need a space to represent those people as well. That's where we represent it. So if you don't put a box around it, you can't really say what's going on there. It's like it's infinity, so the box kind of contains it. So your sample space is fully contained there effectively. Sometimes as well, um, I have seen this. With that little epsilon, that little squiggly E, means the universal set, means everything, and then we count the set. So that's pretty common in a Venn diagram. It's not always, but it's pretty common. So to add up the number of items in this set, I don't know if they're actually people, so I apologise for being peopleless, but I've got 12 and 10 is 22, and 8 is 30 and 20 is 50. And so I have a total of 50 um, items, in this case people, represented in this Venn diagram. So again, I have a title, I have a box, I have circles that are ever so neat like mine. Each of the circles has a description, Something really brief. This isn't the number of dogs, it's actually dog owners, so it's really brief and not very precise here. There needs to be a number here which represents neither. Um, and usually there's a number out here for the whole set. Anyone got any questions? Yep. What's the 12 at the bottom? Okay, who can, who can tell Stella what that is? Or can Stella, can Stella can answer her own question if she wants to? Yeah, I just. Go, answer it. Is it the neither? Yep. Now the dog or cat. Okay. I okay. Questions about that? Cool. Good question, Stella. Thank you. Okay. So the probability of there being dogs. That's bad. I'll say that again. The probability that you pick a dog owner from the from the class, let's say, for example, if this was a class of fifty uh, people, the probability I'd choose a dog owner would be. Wow, we might need to go for hands up because that was a bit uh, tricky. Chris, what did you say? 40%. Is Chris right? I just haven't worked it out myself yet. We got 56%. Violet put a hand up and said 56%. Does that fit with other people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can see the two reasons why here. Chris said, first of all, Chris said 20 out of 50, which he then turned into 50, 40%. Um, Violet and Poe said 28 out of 50, which I did double to make a percentage, 56 percent. But who's right? I can see where they came from. There's the 20, and there's the 28. So who is right? I'll give you a hint. One of them is. It is the 28. I'm sorry, because he put his hand up. <laughs> if you own a dog and a cat, it's still a dog. So surely yeah. you can do it. Yeah. Good thinking. Okay, so it is 28 out of 50 or 56. That makes sense, Chris. And anyone else who wrote 20? I did hear a couple of people asking that as well. So one of the key things with probability is often the language issue. What does a dog owner mean? Does that mean exclusively owns a dog or happens to have a dog as well as any other pet? And typically, you pick the looser definition. In other words, there should be more words to describe a more precise situation. So if I said, what is the probability of choosing, own, uh, um, choosing an owner who only owns a dog, that would be 20. If I said, what's the probability that they own a dog, they're a dog owner, as Otto said, if you own a cat and you own a dog, you're still a dog owner, you just happen to be also a cat owner. So that still fits. Does that make sense, everyone? So again, I didn't actually go through this because I know it's grayed out, but really, really briefly, this is the exclusive dog owners. I won't say they're cat haters, but I'll just say they're exclusive dog owners. Exclusive cat owners, this has both, these have neither. Okay? Please don't shake the room. Okay, um, 
Most people are working in percentages, that's legitimate. Don't feel like you have to. 20 out of 50 and 28 out of 50 is all right as well. Plus you could also simplify it to 10 out of 25 and 14 out of 25, that would be legit. Probability of, uh, of cat or no pet. Who wants to provide an answer? Saxon? Uh, 60%. 60%? 30 out of 50. Yeah, good. Okay? 30 out of 50 or 60%. So that's good. So that's effectively not just these two, which is 22, but also these as well to make it up to 30. Because they own a cat as well. So that means there's 18 cat owners and there are 12, again, I said no pet, but that's very exclusive. Just because you own a goldfish or a rock or a heffalump doesn't mean that you don't have any pets, but based upon this premise of just dogs and cats. Yeah, look up. What's a heffalump? What's a heffalump? I know you're new to the school, but you should at least know what a heffalump is. Someone please fill the screen with what a heffalump is. No. Maddie, thank you. Top of the class. Say it loud and say it proud. Um, it was like the thing that you could do to find the hatch. Yeah. Like he had to go around in circles looking for heffalumps and he made a heffalump trap, which is a big pit in the ground, and put stuff over it to try and catch one. Oh, the education's lacking, I tell you what. All, all of you, apart from Maddie. Yeah, all our cultured swine, that's your problem. Yeah, it's just an imaginary creature. Okay, so that's that. That's a basic intro into Venn diagrams. I'd like to do a couple of definitional bits here. Actually, I might just keep it zoomed out. You can sort of see where we're headed now. Um, so this is for your theory books here. And we're going to start with the concept of complementary events. This might be a recap from last year. Have you heard of complementary events, Charlie? Have you heard of complementary events? Uh, sounds familiar. I suspect that at, at for friends, I think it's a grade A concept as well, but it takes a second to write down, doesn't hurt. If you're going to talk, I'll just keep writing then. Is that too small down the back? Yep. I think this will be okay if I zoom up like this, make it a bit bigger. Um, dogs and cats wouldn't be, yes, they would be. 
small wrinkle is that there's dogs and cat owners that are dogs and cats as well, but yeah, they would be. They have to be two. I don't think you can talk about complementary with three. Yeah. Because you don't you wouldn't normally say A is complementary to B and C. Or you technically you could. Well it would be complementary to B and C together. Exactly. I was trying not to be too tricky, but you could say if D is the event of B and C, then A is complementary to D. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really trying hard not to overwrite things. Um, and because this is sort of from last year, I don't want to, I, I'm hoping this is enough. So we write a dash next to it. So A, if A and B are complementary, then A is B dash, is the, is the complementary to B, that's how we write it, B dash. And because they're complementary, you could say that B is equal to A dash. Yeah, let's leave it as a number though. One. one. Probably if A and B is equal to one. And I'm going to squish this in here. Probably of A and A dash is equal to one. So it, re it works both ways. So if I said to you the probability of A is 0.3 and the probability of B is 0.7, when you add them together you get 1, so you say they're complementary to each other. Sort of, there's a little caveat to that, but that sort of works. Alright, any questions? Now, now that I've made it a bit bigger, hopefully, yeah, that's better, isn't it? Okay, so this whole notation here of probability of A and B, it's a bit clunky and it doesn't really work terribly well. Um, and really, the probability of, um, of events is actually a probability of looking at um, parts of a sample size. So these things are called sets of numbers, right? And sets, I mean, put it like this, you can do an entire university course, not the whole course, but a unit, university unit on set theory, okay? So don't get me wrong, sets are quite complex and we're using them in a fairly simple way. But my point is, we need a bit of notation to go with this ending and oring of sets, joining sets and stuff like that, because there's a whole bunch of back-end stuff that's really worthwhile. So it's worth, we're not going to go into the big old theory, but it's just worth mentioning that the notation has a purpose. So I'm going to have a look at slide three there, more notation. And we're going to use this notation for and. It looks like an upside down, well, or, how about we go this, or looks like a U, like that. And looks like that, the upside down U. Okay. So the probability of A and B is written like this. The probability of A intersect B. Okay? 
and draw a little diagram. This is what it means. In Venn diagram, all of that. The probability of A or B is equal to, oh my gosh, don't write that diagram down. Sorry, I was just um, riffing about thinking. Richard Roller. The probability of A union B is equal to, oh, sorry, is what I wrote before, sorry guys. All of it. Is that okay? Does that make sense? So normally, it's just trying to get a sense of this probability stuff that we're talking about. Normally, when we talk about the probability of A and B, or the intersect, normally we're restricting our sample size further and further. Whereas when we join events together with the union, probability of A or B, we're going from a smaller set to a larger set. Can you kind of see that? Let me just zoom up so I can just explain a little bit more precisely. If I was talking about the probability of A, it would be all of that. If I was talking about the probability of B, it would be all of that. A and B restricts it to just the middle, the bit that's shared. Union works exactly the opposite. A, B, but A union B is the whole thing. So it sort of does the opposite. So un um, intersect restricts, union frees up, makes bigger. Okay, questions? So union includes that little bit too? Yes. Oh yeah, thanks, Otto. So you can see down here, I've written a point here, one, the other, or both is what union means. So there is, a, it's a computer science thing more than a mathematical thing, but there is a thing called an exclusive or, which means it is either one or the other, but not both. And that would be just the two wings without the middle. Um, but outside of the, um, the phrase exclusive or, all means one or the other or both. Okay, really important. So when you're doing a probability problem, if it says find the probability that they have only one only one pet, that would be like an exclusive or. Or if they say find the prob so only one pet means that they can't have both, right? Or if it says find the probability that they have a cat or a dog but not both, that would mean the middle's gone. Yeah. You can't write like the exclusive or with like this up or down. No, nah, it's a more of a computer science term. There might be a mathematical symbol, but it's not one I can think of. I mean, I'm not going to get you to write this, but it would basically be, wouldn't it? It would be A union B minus A intersect B. That would be exclusive or. Yeah. You must look at the look at the Okay, it's gone. Okay. So mutually exclusive is the other phrase that I want to describe. So let me draw it. You can draw it yourself. Oh, I'll zoom out so you can see the other thing. Oops, went to a different card. So, for two events to be mutually exclusive, they cannot occur at the same time. So, if, let's just say we were, we were part of the, um, the city of Kingborough, and that city council put on a, an alert saying that you may have only one pet, and it must be a dog or a cat, then all households would have either a cat or a dog or neither. So therefore, owning a cat or owning a dog would be mutually exclusive. You can't do both. 
without breaking the law. No, it's not. Without breaking a municipal guideline, there you go. Does that make sense? So there's no overlap with mutually exclusive. So I've got a point there, probability of A intersect B. What would that be? One. No, the opposite, zero. Oh, yeah, I was thinking all. Yeah, zero. So if, if they're mutually exclusive, probability of A intersect um, B is equal to zero. The probability of A union B is not actually one. Was that you, Lincoln, that said one? Because there might be something here. Yeah, in, in that graph I saw there's nothing there. But... but it is true that it's equal to probability of A plus the probability of B. Does that make sense? Because there's no intersection. Because there's no overlap, that means that the check... Um, did you kind of follow my, let's just say, you can only have one animal thing? Yeah. So what's the probability then, if you, if you go to a random house in Kingborough, that um, that you'll find a house that has both a cat and a dog in it? Assuming everyone abides by the rules. Zero, because no one will have a cat and a dog. No? And see how there's no mid middle bit in the Venn diagram? Yeah. So the, there is no intersect, which they means they can't be it's a result. Oh. It's like they can't go together. So if we look at the original if we look at the original diagram here, there are twenty-eight dog owners, eighteen cat owners, and of those two groups, eight of them have both a dog and a cat. Now if we lived in a terrible society where you could only have a dog or a cat but not but not both of them, then this is what it would look like. Yeah. Dog, cat, but not both. Yep. Thank you, Hannah. Really appreciate it. All these clarifying questions are really useful. Stella? Um, why is the probability of A or B equal to A? Um, so there may be some no, non-cat owners, or dog owners here, right? So, sorry, non-pet owners. So, if I said, let's just make it up. Let's say there's 20 here. Don't draw this yourself, but this is just a clarifying. Let's just say there's 20 here, there's 10 here, and there's, oh, will say 15. Uh, 15 here and 15 here, say, for example. So, if I was going to pick a cat, uh, if I was going to pick a, if I was going to pick a house at random, and I and I want to know whether they have a cat or a dog, then that would be I could pick any one of those twenty from the cats, so for the dog, fifteen from the cats, and there's fifty in total. So really, I'm just adding up each of the individual probabilities. But if I do the same thing over here, it won't work. Okay? Yeah. It won't work. So if they're mutually exclusive, we get this. But if they're not mutually exclusive, this means we have an overlap that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to write that into these notes. And you might need to write it down somewhere. So if not mutually exclusive, then the probability of A union B would be the probability of A plus the probability of B, but because we've counted the middle twice, we have to subtract the middle. Am I making sense? Yeah. Because if I just worked out the probability of A, that would be 28 out of 50. If I went out the probability of B, that would be 18 out of 50. But I've counted these eight people twice, once in this group and once in this group. So in order to fix it, I'm going to have to take away 8. So it's 28 plus 18 minus 8. And that would be the probability. Okay, I'm about to switch on to the next screen, so I just want to check. Now, I know that some of you will write more slowly than others, maybe because you're just a slow writer, maybe because you're thinking instead of writing. Or uh, when I use my, air, this is called Air Sketch, when I use Air Sketch to get the notes up onto the board, pretty much straight after the lesson, 
the PDF of the board notes goes up onto Google Classroom. So if you fall behind, leave a bit of space, you'll get, you'll get a chance to go back and fill it in later. The next thing I'd like to cover, and then I'm gonna get you down to uh, complete working on your Venn diagram stuff, which is on Google Classroom, if you haven't got it. Um, so far we've looked at a two-circle Venn diagram. I wanna have a quick look at a three-circle Venn diagram. And just to prove to you, I picked this example just randomly off the internet. I have not done it myself. So there's the problem, and I promise you I haven't scrolled down. There's the problem that I got just from the internet. There's a solution down below so we can check our answers out. But we're just going to figure this out together right now as an example of a three-way diagram or a three-circle diagram. I would like to just uh, warn you, though, out of all areas of mathematics, probability is my weakest area, I reckon. And I say that humbly to say that there's a good chance that I might get a bit stuck or scratch my head a little bit. It's okay. We'll work it out, right? But I'm not going to be this super polished present when I do this. So a class of 40 students. All right, here we go. I generally haven't prepared this at all. A class of 40 students completed a survey of what pets they liked. The choices were, okay, so we've got three, cats, dogs, and birds. It's not coming up here. Yeah, it's just highlight. The highlight oh, is. Yeah. Um, the choices were cats, dogs, and birds. And then I've got um, a few facts here. They're not all the facts, actually. I just remembered I was gonna do this while you were doing your problem. So the facts are, we're gonna have a look at them on the um, actual um, page itself, and I'll write it as we are reading it. So we've got 10 students like cats and dogs, but not birds. Two students like dogs and cats. Dogs and birds, but not cats. We've got 12 students like cats and birds. We've got eight students like cats and dogs. Altogether, 28 students liked cats. Nineteen students like dogs. Fifteen students liked birds. Okay, and we need to draw it as an air, as a uh, Venn diagram. Sorry for my scratchy writing there. Okay, so we draw our Venn diagram as big as you like. And we are told that it's a class of 40 students. So I'm going to go, the number in this, the whole set is equal to 40. That helps me. Now I need to draw three circles, one for each of my groups. So I'm going to see how I go with this. One. Two, three, not very well, not very neat, but still, that's okay. Three diagrams, and I need to label those so that I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use, what is it, cats, dogs, and birds? So I'm going to go birds, cat, cats, and dogs, I think. Just so I'll sort of in alphabetical order. Good so far? Now, the thing with these sorts of problems is that you often have to do a bit of a drive-by. So you go through and sort of work out what you can work out and then go back and keep on doing it until you've uh, worked out every single spot here. But you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then an eighth spot out here. All of them need to be filled out. So my first drive-through is just to go through the whole lot and I'll fill in what I can. Um, everyone liked at least one pet. What can I fill in that now? I can fill in that. Yeah, the zero outside. It's worth doing, I reckon. 
by filling in, even if it's a zero, by filling it in, it kind of reminds you that you have done it. Um, so that means there has to be 40 in B union C union D. It's got to be 40 all the way through here. What else? 10 students like cats and dogs, but not birds. Okay, here we go. Here's cats and dogs. This whole section is cats and dogs, uh, cats as well as dogs, but this bit is also including birds. So that means that this bit must be 10. Feel free to try and go ahead of me if you want to, or you can just soak in my thinking process. Two students like dogs and birds, but not cats. Dogs and birds, but not cats. Well, that'd be that. Dogs, birds, but not cats. 12 students like cats and birds. Okay, now this is where we can't put the fact in yet. Why? Charlie? It doesn't say not dogs. Yeah, it just doesn't say not dogs. So I do know that the, oops, that this whole thing is going to equal 12, but I can't say anything else yet. So I'm going to actually probably another good idea to do is tick off facts that are completely done. That's done. That's done. That's done. I haven't used that. Eight students liked cats and dogs. Ah, that's better. Eight students like cats and dogs. So cats and dogs is this bit here. Hang on, that can't be right. Yeah. Have I stuffed up somewhere? Did I? Is it cats and birds? Is it? Thank you. Do for moment. All right. Yeah, let's take two. Eight birds like cats and dogs, which is kind of a good still cats and birds. It's because I've got this is my cats and birds here. Oh, what's that then? Wait, is 10 is birds and cats, and the eight is dogs and cats. Okay, so this one's wrong. Hang on, I'll go back to it. The eight students like cats and dogs, and the ten yeah. students like cats and birds. I'll, I'll just double check. Where did I get 12? Oh, no, 10. Okay. So 10 like cats and birds, but not dogs. What is wrong with me? Okay. Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. Cats and birds, but not dogs. Um, two students liked dogs and birds, but not cats. That's right. Um, 12 students like cats and birds, eight students like cats and dogs. That was right. So it was the other one that you said, you actually said 10. I did hear you say that, but I just, um, wasn't paying attention. Um, right now it's all good, isn't it? Back to air sketch. Okay. So. That was a literacy problem, wasn't it? My inability to read properly. Okay, so 10 students like cats and birds, but not dogs. So that means a 10 goes there. Two students like dogs and birds, but not cats. So that means the two goes there. 12 students liked cats and birds. So this is cats and birds here. 10 is captured here which means this has to be two in here, has to be, for that statement to be true. Is that okay? So 10 and two is 12. Eight students liked cats and dogs. So cats and dogs are here and here. It's this slot here. There's two represented here, which means that there must be six in here. So that's filled in. Questions? The rest of it's not so bad. 28 students liked cats. I mean, you could even get rid of that last statement and still do it. 15 students like birds, but anyway, I'll leave it at that. So 28 students like cats. Yep, so 10 and 2 is 12 and 6 is 18, which means there's 10 left over in the cats only box. 19 students like dogs, 
So we've got 6 and 2 is 8 and 2 is 10. So there must be 9 here. And 15 students like birds. So that's 10 and 2 is 12 and 2 is 14, which means there must be one student that likes birds and nothing else. Technically, well, we'll do it, but it should add up to 40. Cool. I'll just do it for myself as well. 10 and 10 is 20, 21, 23, 25, 31, 40 plus 0 is 40. So that works out. So technically, I could have this problem could have been phrased without that last one, 15 students like birds. There's enough information by that time to, for me to be able to work out um, the bird only's from there. And that's basically it. And then you can sort of ask questions. We can just look at our, make sure our answers are correct. Better be. Come on. Um, of course, it's a different order, isn't it? So cats is 10, 10 to 6, yep. Birds are 1 and 2 to 10. Yep, and dogs are 9 and 6 to 2, 9, 6 to 2. Yep, cool, cool, cool. And that's basically it. And then you can sort of solve problems. So if I said to you, in fact, I'll just ask, think about the time. I might just almost finish on this really and then we might have some practice time next lesson. Um, have a go at solving and answering these questions from the Venn diagram. Yep. Sure. Yes. That'll do. Have a go at doing those ones. And I'll just give you just a couple of minutes um, and we'll go from there. Well, could I, thank you, um, Tom. Glad someone said that you couldn't actually see what I was doing. There we go. Really quickly, two minutes. Absolutely legit to leave them as fractions. Don't even simplify them if you don't want to. Just write the fractions down. Yeah, what's the videos? Um, there's only there's three. Yeah. Um, the two, like the second of that email, the two um, longer videos. He talks like this. Yeah. So like that up and it's better. And then these examples sort of cover that kind of stuff. So I guess the important thing is that like there's a, a formula to learn yeah. to help you do this kind of thing. Plus, you just need to know how to read conditional probability of the Venn diagram. And we read conditional probability of the tree, weight of tree. Then I think next to that. And then I think you pretty much got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probability of B and B complement. The complementary of B. Which is B with B and C. Is it? 
which would be everything except for B. Oh, okay. So that's just everything. Just take attendance because I forgot before. Why would it be B and C dash? Hmm? Just write it with the second line B and C with a dash. That one there? Yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't want it to be. I don't want it to be C dash. Have I misunderstood your question? Yeah, what does the dash do? This dash here? Yeah. Remember that means complementary? Um, in that last slide? I just realised I've kept the video going. Sorry if you're watching this video back and then you've got this massive amount of silence in the middle. Everything that's not B. So the probability of getting B is or anything other than B. And is it or? No, I've got and there. What is it? What is the event? If you say it in English, you'll see what it's going to be. B is the event that the student likes birds. What is the probability that the student likes birds and does not like birds? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I just made these up. Tom got 31 over 40. Right. Let's look at it together. That'll wrap us up for the weekend. Okay. Really quickly. The probability of B. So I'm looking at this circle. It's anything under that circle. So anything under that circle would be 10 and 2 is 12 and 2 is 14 and 1 is 15. I'm not going to simplify these things. I'm just going to say 15 out of 40. All good? Probability of B intersect C. So here is B. Here is C. Do you reckon you might want to need to focus? B is all of these. C is all of these. So the intersect is the overlap. So it's 12 out of 40. Ask questions. D union C. Here is D. Here is C. So the union actually is everything except for that one, isn't it? So it's actually 39 out of 40. And here's, a, here's a, a special one for you. No, I won't put that because it's not quite right. I was going to give you a bit of extra info, but it's actually not right. Okay with everyone? B intersect C intersect D. So when you've got three, it's a little bit like um, bed mass. You can do the first two first, B and C. So that would be, that, oops, there's B and C would be just this bit here. And then and D, well, this is all of D and this is B and C, then this is the only overlap. So it's two out of 40. And this last one is the intersect, the overlap. Here's B. 
here's B. Here is not B. What overlap have we got? Nope, because that's part of B. No, that's part of B. That's part of B. That's part of B. That's not part of B. But it's not part of but it's, but it's not part of B. Therefore, it's not an overlap with B. So it's zero. And I'm going to say this to you in English now. Remember, complementary means the op the opposite event, right? So if the event the event B is what one event. Sorry, the event B. Describe it in words. Birds. That the student likes birds. Yeah. What's the complementary event then? That the student does not does not like birds. What's the pro if I pick a student at random? What's the probability that I pick a student that likes birds and does not like birds at the same time? Zero. Zero, unless we've got a very confused student. Okay? Does that make sense from an English perspective why it would be zero? Yes. But it is supported in the maths. B and not B are, in fact, there is no overlap. That's it, everybody. It's now nearly 2.35. You may pack up and you can go as soon as you're ready to. Have a lovely weekend. We'll start doing some practice on this on Tuesday. Homework. What's your homework again? Starts with greedy and ends in pig. You're welcome. Sorry that was so long, everybody.